In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use Visual Composer buttons to create flashy buttons, good looking buttons, great hover effects on buttons. Just really cool buttons, quickly, easily, and simply. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, hit subscribe, then hit the bell notification icon so YouTube actually tells you when I publish new stuff. And with that out of the way, let's head in the screen capture and start learning some stuff. I'll see you there. To start playing around with Visual Composer buttons, we first have to have a page to play around in. So you can open one that you have, or add a new one, which I'm going to do, or just watch along whatever you prefer. I'm going to call this new page VC buttons, click on save draft, and I'm going to head over to the front end editor, which allows for easier editing, I think, and we're going to play around with some button designs. So we have our elements that we can add down here. We're going to click on add element. So I'm just going to click on button right here to add the button. And this first box is where we add the text for the button. So quite often, we have some kind of call to action. I'm gonna make mine try for free. And we usually add a URL for a button. Buttons usually have to go somewhere. I'm just gonna add a hashtag for the URL. So that's good enough for now. Click on set link. You can change the button style. And since we're in the front end editor, we see our button on the left here. As we change the style and click on save changes, we see the button changing as opposed to the backend editor where you'd have to save the page, go out and refresh and see what the page looks like live and be a real pain. Here you can just save it and always see these changes live, including any hover functionality that those buttons have. So you can go through and find the one that you want. This one's pretty neat. looks like it's being pressed down, like you're actually pushing on a button. I'm gonna keep that one, the 3D version. I'm gonna change the shape to round, just for something different. So we have a pill shape button, cool little animation. We can change the color to any of these selections that they give us. I'm gonna go for classic green. I'm gonna change the size to large. Alignment, I'll keep it as left. Uh, you can make it a full width button if you want, but I don't want to. I'm gonna add an icon and put the icon on the right. And we can choose from various galleries, including the newly added material library, which is part of the direct license. If you don't have a direct license, you won't see some of these, including the material one. But you choose one of those libraries, and then you choose the icon by clicking on this down arrow right here. You can search for it by name, or you can go through and find one you want. Try it for free. Let's see, maybe we have an airplane in there. We'll save changes, see how that looks. So we have a green button now with an airplane. Looks pretty cool. You can animate the button as it's being loaded in if you want to do that. For example, bounce in. We can see the animation happening right here as we choose it from the drop down. I'm going to use the bounce in. Click on save changes. So every time the page loads, the button will bounce in like we just saw there. You can add an ID or a clasp to the button as well. And you can add JavaScript. So you can add inline code for JavaScript. Something you can add in here is a click event for Google Analytics, or you could have it so a pop-up appears from a different plugin where you have the JavaScript code that it gives you to, to add inline to a button. You can do various things with JavaScript. If you don't know JavaScript, don't worry about that function. It's not needed by any means. So those are all the options we have for our general buttons. In the design options panel, we can set margins, borders, and padding around the button. You probably don't want to add a border, but you want to add, might want to add margins and padding depending on where the button is on your page. But all in all, I think our button's done. I'm going to click on save and then close this. So there we have our button inside of our row. And to make it a little prettier, for example, you might want to have a background image on this row. So let's add a background. We're going to stretch it for the whole row. We are going to add a simple parallax effect. Add the image here. I'm going to just pick one from my image library. Not the green one because the button's green. This one because it's very light. 
So there's more contrast between the button and the image. And the design options are gonna put some padding above and below. And let me see what else. Content position in the middle. We want to have, make sure it's stretch row. Okay. We're gonna save those changes. Now we have our background image behind it, which is pretty cool. Now I wanna center the button, because on the left it looks a little silly. So I'm just gonna center that button by going to Alignment, Center. Click on Save Changes. And then maybe we wanna add another, something else like a headline. Maybe call this the, the coolest airplane rental service because we have an airplane on our button. I'm gonna center that. I'm gonna make the color white. No, I'm not, black. And then you can go ahead and change the font if you want, which I do. That one looks fantastic. Click on Save Changes. And I'm gonna drag and drop it above the button. And black was perhaps not the best option because of the rocks there. But you kind of get the idea. You can add pretty cool stuff pretty easily. And the buttons, of course, are an important part of that. Uh, so that's about all there is to these buttons. And you can customize them any way you like that we saw in those options there. You have the ability to add custom IDs and classes so you can style them even further with CSS. But the built-in buttons do quite a bit, especially having this 3D option and the different types of button styles you could choose from. You can probably make pretty close to any button you want based on their presets. As you know, Visual Composer is a premium plugin which you can buy from codecanning.net. If you buy it through the link below, I get a couple percentage of the purchase price. There's no extra cost to you, but what I'm gonna send to you if you buy it through that link is my complete Visual Composer course for free because basically I'm being paid by the Visual Composer instead of paid by you. So I'm gonna give you that course for free. All you have to do is send me the receipt after you purchase Visual Composer, and I will get you access to that course. If you have a theme that has Visual Composer, so you don't actually buy the plugin, you won't have access to the template library and a couple other features, but I will give you a heavy discount for the Visual Composer course if you have a theme that has Visual Composer. So if that's the case, just send me an email at bjorn at wplearninglab.com. Say you have such and such a theme with Visual Composer, and I will send you the discount information. So the next step is go ahead, click below, buy Visual Composer, send me the receipt, learn all about it in my complete course, and start building awesome stuff with Visual Composer. I hope this video helps you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below this video. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe, then click the bell notification icon so you're actually notified when I publish more tutorials for you. And with that out of the way, click on one of these videos that popped up on the right hand side so you get even better at WordPress. And until next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.